Welcome to the Rolling Ground Sports and Entertainment Show. We thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate uh, everyone that's here, everyone that's been involved with us for the last couple of weeks putting this project together. Uh, it's produced by LFP Media, uh, Mr. Finesse Demps. And uh, we're uh, shooting right now uh, live, uh, actually live taping, pre-recorded at the Zone Restaurant and Bar located at 5753 Crane Highway in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. As we get started, I have a very distinguished panel of guests with me here today. And basically, we're going to talk about topics related to athletics, a little bit of entertainment and education, especially highlighting some of the contributions and values of our nation's historically black colleges and universities. But as I get started, I want to again say to our studio audience, well, thank you for being here. Welcome and give yourselves a hand. Okay, I'm going to introduce the gentleman to my near right, uh, your left. Uh, this uh, person is what I would consider the quintessential professional musician. He's a trombonist and arranger. Uh, he has a storied history working with some of the classiest international acts in the world of music, including Alex Bunyan, Brian Culbertson, Bootsy Collins, George Clinton and P-Funk All-Stars, currently working with Chuck Brown and also doing some work in his own private projects. And uh, he also worked with the Purple Man himself, Prince and the New Power Generation. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to my friend and my brother, Mr. Greg Boyer. Hey, Greg, thanks for joining us, man. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. Uh, quick question, though. Yep. Where's Brian's Road, Maryland? Brian's Road, Maryland is uh, in Charles County. <laughs> Okay. It is maybe uh, 15 minutes from Waldorf, which is probably the biggest city, town, if in you Charles, say that, okay. in Charles County. Okay. So, well, I thought you yeah. made it up, to be honest with you. No, no, no. <laughs> Brian's Road is the name of the town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Lackey High School, I do believe? Yes, it is. Okay, super. You can find Greg on Facebook, just Facebook. Greg Boyer, B-O-Y-E-R, look at some of the pictures, and also on the www.rollinggrimeshow.com, we have some pictures with him with uh, Chuck Brown and uh, Boosie Collins and his lovely wife, Dana. As well, on my left and your right, a man actually that needs no introduction, but we're going to introduce him anyway. He's my friend and my brother for real. Um, he has a storied history in the world of athletics, especially on the college level. College basketball coach burst on the scene in the early 1990s with an epic victory in the NCAA tournament over the then top ranked Duke Blue Devils as he was coaching the University of California. Since then, he's been a scout with the National Basketball Association. He's a mentor, he's a coach, he's a minister to me. And as well, he's now the head basketball coach for Morgan State University Bears. I welcome you, Mr. Coach Todd Bozeman. Todd, I know you have an extremely busy schedule. I keep bragging on you. I appreciate you taking the time to come out and see us. How's the family? Let me start by saying that. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate that. The family's doing well. Everyone's doing well. Got an empty nest now. All the kids are in college, so uh, everything's going well. Now, I was reading about one of the kids that just went to college. Where was he playing and what was he doing? Uh, my nephew, who is uh, 20 years old, Koya, he's at uh, Eastern Arizona Community okay. College playing uh, football. Yeah, he's a cornerback, doing well. Uh, my son, Blake, is 19. And he's a freshman at Morgan. Okay. Plays for me. Uh, How's that? Okay. Been a great experience. Good. <laughs> yeah, been a great experience. Uh, for me, anyway. Maybe not for <laughs> but uh, and then my baby girl is uh, a freshman at UVA Super. and uh, doing, uh, doing well as well. So uh, all is well. All right. Well, I just want you all to know that uh, Todd was the captain of my junior high and my high school basketball team. Yes, I played basketball. I tried real hard to get him to come out for tight end. He just wasn't having it. But uh, who knows, maybe in the future we can get him out there on the football field. Wow. <laughs> to, to my far right, Mr. Mr. Self-Empowerment, Wilbert Skipper. Uh, I'm going to start out basically by telling you that I met Skip many years ago when he was a star basketball player with the Anacostia Indians out of Southeast Washington, D.C. Um, he had a storied career, especially at community college level in uh, Nebraska, where he holds the scoring record. He'll tell you a little bit about that a little bit later. As well, he played locally for George Washington Colonials. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Self-Empowerment. He's my guest co-host, Mr. Wilbert Skipper. Thank you. Now, Skip, I just went through a litany of stuff that uh, you're involved in, but uh, tell me a little bit about some of the work that you're doing professionally right now. 
Well, I'm doing a number of things. Uh, first of all, I have a passion for motivational speaking. I'm really enjoying that, having an opportunity to speak with kids and adults to encourage them to be better than they were yesterday. I'm really excited about that. Um, hopefully in the next 60 to 90 days I'll have my first book out, Tie Your Life's Constant Struggles to Success. All right. I'm really looking forward to uh, producing that and getting that out so everybody can see that despite where you are, the struggles, the storms that will come in your life, that you can see your way out. There's some fundamental things that we have to do every day. I mean, let's face it, in the world that we live now, especially with the economic situation, there are a lot of trying times for a lot of people. And there's certain rules and principles that I think we all need to have, and I'm going to talk about those a lot in the book. Also, I'm working as a director of fundraising uh, for Sterion Energy, and I'm really enjoying that as well because I have the opportunity to help a lot of 501c uh, organizations raise money. I mean, right now, it's just so hard for businesses to survive without support and help. So we're doing a fantastic job in that area as well. Good. Well, once again, I want to thank you for joining me and being my guest co-host. Uh, on occasion, we're going to have Mr. Darrell Prue, who is also a friend and a brother of mine. We grew up together in the Southeast area, Washington, D.C., where uh, Skip played basketball. And uh, Darrell right now is on assignment coaching AAU basketball, uh, but he uh, played ball at West Virginia University. Did some coaching with Todd and also with uh, uh, Georgetown University. We just want to send him greetings and look forward to having you in the future um, on our show. Hey guys, look, I'm going to throw some questions in the air and we're going to jump on them right now. There's some parallels between athletics, um, academics, and entertainment. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why on the Rolling Ground Sports and Entertainment Show, uh, we want to tackle uh, essentially those three industries in our conversations. So one of the things that's pressing right now is we watch what's going on in the world of uh, especially college athletics. Uh, we're hearing and seeing a lot of stuff that's going on, uh, some of it positive, some of it not so positive. Well, there's a question I have on my website right now asking, is the NCAA uh, doing a good job of helping to prepare student athletes for the real world once they finish? Um, I have my viewpoints on it, but you know, I'm throwing it out there right now. Let's talk about it. Well, I'll take the lead on that. I think uh, the NCAA is doing a good job in many ways, but obviously there's always room for improvement. Um, when I look back at my days of playing at George Wash University, they had a lot of things in place that helped us, like the after, uh, after class uh, setup where we had counselors and things of that uh, nature that we could always use to help us in that area as far as academics is concerned. But one of the things that really concerns me about the, the student athlete is being able to prepare the student athlete for after basketball, after football. I think that's essential and very important. So I think from an NCAA standpoint, they can do a better job at preparing kids for after basketball or football is over with, making sure that they become a model person for the real world. Because as we know, when you leave college and you jump into the real world, we're talking about a multicultural world. We're talking about different That's a good things. point. Now, now, how does some of that happen with the demands on their schedule and their time? I mean, what, how do you wed some of those? Well, well, one of the things. Type one of the things, things I think can happen is just like you allot time for practice in the morning and practice in the afternoon. You, of course, we know you have your scheduling of games. You can allot time. Maybe there needs to be a course instituted where you just concentrate on shaping the human being or the student athlete so that they'll be better prepared. Of course, this goes back to parenting as well. Um, I think if you go back to the household and you look at the parenting situation, of course, the kids that have better structure, have discipline as they're growing up, are gonna be some of those same kids that are probably gonna do much better in a college setting than probably after they've finished playing uh, football or basketball. But that's just one ideal that I well, have. It may not be the answer, but that's just one idea. Well, it sound doable or are we California dreaming? Well, that, that was, uh when Skip mentioned brought in the parenting deal, that, that's pretty much where I come from. And I know everyone is, that does not have the same structure, so uh, I want to say that I think the NCAA is, is uh, making a good effort, but uh, I don't want to place it all on their shoulders because it's not all on their shoulders. It, it's, it's, on, it's on not necessarily the parents, but the guidance and uh, the, uh, the mentors that, that the athletes or that the students are, are under. And so it's a, it's a society thing. And uh, I think that, that we have to do a, a better job uh, as a whole to, uh, to help prepare the student athletes. I, I don't think you can just put it on the NCAA. But like I said, they have a good structure, but you know, they have to give the coaches, you know, cause you, you're trying to balance, you know, in one instance, they, they hold the coaches accountable 
but then they don't give them enough time to exactly. be with them. So you you know that's kind of hard, and it's hard to to have an impact on a young person's life if you don't have access to them. Absolutely. You know, it's just like your children. I mean, when if you if you don't spend time with them, and here 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 the the, the analogy is, you know, the parents that are working hard to try to make a better way for them spending all their time at work and less time with the kids Absolutely. so now the kids are raising themselves and Absolutely. their friends are help raising them so it's kind of the Absolutely. same thing in the Let's NCAA go. so so I, I just think that it, it, it you know it's back to the same old adage that we've always heard it takes a village to raise a, a child and so it takes everybody Absolutely. it's not just that yes. you can't just put it on the NCAA you have to put it on everyone and we have different you know viewpoints that get involved in that so I just think it's a bigger, bigger picture. Now, I remember Absolutely. playing ball at a Syracuse University. When I played football there. I remember I did a lot of raising of myself, like you said earlier. I mean, the coaches were real limited. I mean, once we finished practice, basically, they were supposed to be out of my life until the next morning. Right. Has that model changed much? Well, uh, it's changing a little bit, <coughs> okay. um, just because they give you a little bit of time, but. You know, you, you still have recruiting, you still have, as a coach, you got recruiting, you have, you know, time. scheduling, you know, you have a lot of different things that you have to, uh, you know, attend to. Sure. So, so that, that kind of puts a, you know, uh, you know, kind of separates your time a little bit. Um, and then you get but, invited to the Rolling Ground show. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But, uh, but the, so, so that, that's, that's what I would say. Um, you know, I just think that, that. Uh, when you look at all the different, uh, you know, we as adults have to try to help help the kids with that. And, you know, parents, when you look at the AAU scene and parents, everyone's wanting their child to be the next uh, LeBron, LeBron James. James. And Absolutely. so, yeah. you know, they're concerned about playing time when a kid is seven or eight years Absolutely. old as opposed Absolutely. to being fundamental. And, yeah. you know, I always, I, you know, I have a saying that, that you're either going to suffer the pain of discipline or you're going to suffer the pain of regret. Absolutely. So it's one or the other. So, <laughs> so you might as well suffer that pain of discipline because I think that Absolutely. one is a, a little better to deal with. That's um, right. wow. But I just think that it starts at a much younger age. I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's uh, hopeless at, by, by no means, but I just think that we have to be realistic okay. and, and not putting it on parents. It's kind of like parents putting it on a teacher to, to raise their child, and that's not the teacher's responsibility. The teacher right. is to help to to educate them, but you get your real basis at, at home. Exactly. And, or with the people that, because everybody doesn't have mm -hmm. parents, but your, right. your, your mentors are the people that are really uh, kind of guiding you. Well, that's going to be the title of your first book, Pain of Discipline or Pain of Regret. <laughs> right, I'm going to help propose it for you. I'm actually working on my book, but that is, is and, and I've suffered both, so, so, so I'm not going to title it that, but we're working on it. I appreciate that. Well, in terms of that discipline that you're talking about, um, you need that in any particular walk of life, any profession, relationship, etc. And I think it requires just as much discipline to, to be in the music business yes, I as mean, it does anything else. Anything you do requires discipline. And it's a matter of one, how bad you want it, which will fuel how much work you put into it. And two, I mean, like you were saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Sometimes the foundation, even as, as basic as making sure someone goes to church so you can learn right from wrong. A lot of the problem is everybody knows right from wrong. They just think that they can get away with certain things that they shouldn't. And that's why you have people doing things that they know are wrong, but they think no one is looking, or I can get away with this, or you know, smooth it over by some kind of story or whatever. And that is really the downfall to a lot of these people. You I mean, you it's, Things you do will earn you money. Absolutely. But if you have a good sense of what's wrong, what's right, you won't do the wrong thing with that money. Okay. End up in jail for something crazy. Okay. Or, you know, buying stuff that depreciates in value in a, a matter of seconds off. Now, in your industry, you see some or, or a lot of that. Oh, I see a lot of it. I see people, like, when I first got in the band, I went from playing in places that had a dirt floor playing in 20,000 seat coliseums when I started playing with P-Funk at 19 years old. Oh. It was a crash course in what to do and what not to do. And if you open your eyes and you just remember your upbringing, Ten Commandments, basic mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, okay, everybody is doing this thing over here. But I've been taught that that is a road to destruction, mm -hmm. so let me turn away from that. Mm -hmm. And it's in the upbringing. Absolutely. I mean, there's certain things that your parents and your 
neighborhood are going to have to teach you, and that stuff is going to have to stick. Well, I'm going to go on record right now just because um, we've been running this uh, running the survey um, on our website, and we've asked people <clears throat> what is their perception of the NCAA, quote unquote, coaches, leaders, etc., in terms of. Jay, you're losing the games for us. You're not even using the picks. You shot one for 27. I'm not the one that's not coming off the picks. Y'all done here? Uh, we want to play some full court. Oh, yeah, we're, we're good. We're no, good. we're not. Y'all want the court? You play for the court. That's what real men do. So y'all want to play for it? Am I stuttering? You're not going to punk us. I'm not serious. I am serious. People come in here and they think they got us. They don't have nothing. Oh. This spring. Babe, I got a slot taste. Be right back. I'll be right here. Ugh, oh, you were an animal last night. So, babe, I was thinking we could go on our first real date. Yeah, babe, we should do that. Oh, yes. No, he didn't. He took my coffee. Guys, happy Valentine's Day, sweetie. And you too, Mom. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave you two alone. I'll call you? Or not. We'll be guys. Sally Slam, go park some cars. Whoa, she's so sweet to the eye. She walked right by with her nose in the sky. That's like, my mom. She don't even know who I am. Okay, where's the window? Why? The dark night strikes again. Hey, yeah. But women have had enough. What is the problem with men of this generation? Ladies, do you understand the mindset of a man? You are never gonna win in the game of love. Act like a lady, but think like a man. Now one book is changing the game. What are your short-term goals? What are your long-term goals? What are your views on relationships? Who are you, Oprah? I could use a nightcap. She has this five-date rule before I get invited up. We like friends without benefits. She thinks I'm a chef on the rise. She's going to run when I tell her the truth. I'm totally screwed. Mom, what is this? It's the new read for my book club. Family Feud, Steve Harvey? He doing something to bust like that? This man is a traitor. They know all of our maneuvers. This is war, gentlemen. We use his words to get what we want. Hey, Mike, how old is your mom? What? I'm not saying it like that. I am, I am, it's like that. Miss Loretta, I'm ready for the rest of the tour. Now, when the truth comes out. He's a part-time waiter. There's no such thing as the perfect man. The game is on. The only women I want to talk to tonight are dancing naked down at the butt factory. I need to be held. I need you to rub my back. Put me in my onesie. Whatever you need to do, baby, I'm yours. Yes, I can. Doubt better leave. I wonder what this plan. Pull me, grab me, grab us in the bucket game. I have to show I'm a guy with potential. Sweet. Where'd you? Damn, look how small your skirt is. Woo! Think like a man. I've been taught that that is a road to destruction. Mm -hmm. So let me turn away from that. Mm -hmm. And it's in the upbringing. Absolutely. I mean, there's certain things that your parents and your neighborhood are going to have to teach you. And that stuff is going to have to stick. Well, I'm going to go on record right now just because um, we've been running this, uh, running the survey um, on our website, and we've asked people <clears throat> what is their perception of the NCAA, quote unquote, coaches, leaders, etc., in terms of what they're doing to help prepare student athletes for the real world. And basically, 80% of the folks are responding negatively and saying they're not doing a good enough job. And I have some commentary that you can read about on the website itself. But um, I found that to be very striking. 80% is, is a, lot, a lot of folks. Now. Tell me a little bit about why does that perception sit out there? Is it media driven? Is it real? I mean, I have my own experiences, but I mean, you get to deal with a lot of different athletes, a lot of different people in different venues. I mean, how much of that, um, how much of that can we institutionalize in terms of change, growth, and development? And how much of it is really going to be based on your upbringing and, and, and what you do with the resources you have in front of you? Well, I, can't, I agree with Todd. I, I think it's a combination of many things. It's the family structure, it's a little bit of the NCAA, but it's also the people that, like for an example, when I was coming up, there was Glenn Harris at Douglas Junior High School when I was an eighth grader. Very short story. My best friend now, James Chip Coach, we were playing, competing all summer. Thought we were going to make the team. Richard Mosby was head coach. It was an honor to be a Douglas Hawks. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Jordan, who's now at Carroll, uh, came through the, the Douglas uh, Junior High Ring of Honor. We didn't make the team my eighth grade year. You didn't make the team? We did not make the team my eighth grade year. I was destroyed, disappointed. I was this kid shooting from 45 feet at age 10 and thought I had everything figured out. Well, we, we wound up not making the team. And I was so upset. And then here comes Glenn Harris, who is now uh, has a sports show, TBD, uh, Channel 8. He was a roving leader out of Howard University. Where are the roving leaders? Hmm. Where are the mentors? Where are the people that can pull some a kid 
to the side and say, hey, I know you have structure at home, or maybe your mom and dad are doing the right thing, but okay, it's okay to dream about becoming an NBA basketball player or football, NFL football player. But most important, we need to help and get, reach back and help these kids become better people. And the only way you can do that is you need help. Okay, so yeah. on the basis when you talk about where some of the roving leaders, you mentioned guidance, you mentioned mentors a little earlier. I mean, whose job is it to be out there um, gravitating to these youngsters and, and as they get older, uh, pulling them by the coattails, uh, shirt collar, whatever, um, helping them pull their pants up, take the do-rags off, whatever is necessary for them to integrate successfully or at least begin to integrate successfully in society. I mean, the people that come around your program, the adults that you see, um, are they primarily friend or foe? You know, are they primarily there to help strengthen and buoy what you're trying to do? Or do you see a bunch of us coming around and just trying to take from them? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, a little far-reaching, more far-reaching than that. And I think really? that, I just think that, that whenever you come in contact with, with, first of all, let me say this. You, in order to learn, you have to want to learn. Absolutely. And yeah. you have to want to be taught. You have to be in, in, in kind of that frame of mind that I want to take from Skip. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to take from Greg. I want to learn. Yeah. So if you sat down with a young musician, if he didn't want to do it, it's no no matter what you exactly. say to yeah. him, he ain't going to go. She is not going <laughs> to get it. Result. So, so you have to be. Program and you yeah, but you, but you, you, you. They, so <laughs> it, it has to start there, and then and then the people that they come in contact with. You know, we just as a society, you know, with microwaves and fast food, everybody wants everything fast. And, 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 and when Skip just mentioned his story, to me it just it reminds me, and I always tell kids that it's okay that you made a mistake or that you didn't make it. You know, parents get upset if a kid doesn't make it. Well, it's okay if you don't make the team. Exactly. You know, they you know they, they want you to put a kid on the team because everybody's on the team. They want a kid to play because they come to practice like everybody else. That's not how life works. Okay. And so I think that in this society, a lot of times in this society, we're trying to, to make everything right for the kids. You know, everybody's not going to get a trophy. That's right. You know, so if you want a trophy, you have to put more time into it. So spend time explaining them how to fish as opposed to just giving them the fish, you know, yeah. the old adage in the Bible, yeah. you know. So, so that's, to me, that's where it kind of starts. And so if, yeah, if, if you, like I tell parents when, if, when, your, when your child comes to play for me, you know, don't call me, I don't talk to parents about playing time. It doesn't happen. I'll talk to you about their well-being and, you know, academics, but I'm not having no conversation about playing time because my practices are open. They can come sit in practice and watch practice. And if you sit in there, you'll understand why we do what we do. You'll understand I don't need the, the, the Saturday morning or Sunday morning quarterbacks or Monday morning quarterbacks. Because exactly. if you come into practice, you're going to see what I'm dealing Absolutely. with and, yeah. and whether we're having success or, or whether we're not having as much success. You're going to see the reasons why in practice. And they'll so be able to objectively. You can come to practice, and everybody doesn't do that. And I'm not saying everybody should always open up their sure. practices, but I'm comfortable with it. So you can come to practice, but I don't talk to parents about playing time. It's because like an athletic PTA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, we're not, we're, it's not a, it's not a, yeah. yeah I'm not, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, exactly. We're not, we're not doing that. I'm, yeah. That's another show. All right, ladies and gentlemen. PTA program, man. Welcome to State University. Uh, um, but I just, I just think it's, I just think I think it's, it's bigger and I think that uh, as adults, you know, we are the ones that, that have to teach the young men we, we, or, or, or women, we, the adults, we're the ones that have to do it. So if you're a mentor, then be a mentor and back off and if something is not necessarily going right, then tell them that's okay, but you got to work harder at it. It's, it's funny because you sit around, you watch games on TV, and if you have a crowd, I have a place where I watch watch the games, and, and, and you'll hear right away, you know, a team is up by, let's say, Baylor and uh, Xavier last night. Mm -hmm. You know, Baylor jumped up to a big lead. All of a sudden, everybody, oh, they're, they're all state. <laughs> you know, the game is over. Well, I'm saying, how's the game it's over? It's just a, yeah, it's, it's, just, still running. it's 10 minutes <laughs> in the game. And so, so, but, but, but what that does is tell you that that's kind of the mindset right. of society. Yeah. If it's raining, it's a bad day. Right. Well, you exactly. know, I tell my players, well, if it's raining, there's no way the weatherman's going to tell me, he ain't going to tell me this a bad day that's for right. me that's because right. it's raining. He's not going to tell me it's ugly. Suppose I like rain. Suppose yeah. I don't want to yeah. walk out in the rain. Well, you yeah. know, so, so, so it's, it's, all how you, it's all how you view it and how you approach it. So I just think that we have to constantly let kids know that you can get there you know they, people want to complain about well we're, I'm in the inner city we don't have books we don't have that hey it's a whole lot of people that have been Absolutely. successful without having that Absolutely. without having books without having 
you know, a lot of different things. So you can't use that as a crutch. You gotta, you gotta find a way or make a way. It's exactly. just, just two exactly. choices. I haven't said that real quick because I know Greg, he's breathing, so I know you're yeah. coming with something. <laughs> no, my, my, I, I, I have this thing where I, I tell my kids and, and sometimes I have family discussions. I don't want to hear excuses. I want to hear solutions. That's right. And when you said notebooks, there's libraries everywhere. Absolutely. It ain't that hard. I mean, they're in your neighborhood. Go down there and grab them. Well, internet now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're on the internet yeah, now, yeah. yeah. There's a whole lot of ways around any problem. Absolutely. All you have to do is want it. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you have the desire, you'll figure out a way to make it happen. Yeah. Well, and, and then to add on to that, when I look back, and I know we're, we're telling our age uh, now, but when I look back, when I was cut up as a kid, we didn't have some of the resources that a lot of young folks have now, but a lot of us made it out with limited resources. Now, what it did for me individually, with, by having limited resources, my parents made sure we had certain things in the household that we needed, but we didn't necessarily have everything that we wanted to have. And because of that, as I uh, progressively move in my, my life now with my wife, with my kids, and now grandfather, I'm trying to instill some of those same things in my kids. Sure. And, and share that with them in hopes that they see it and it works for them as well. So right now we're going to take a quick pause for the calls and when we get back we're going to talk a little bit about what we're talking about teaching the kids, who's going to teach the adults. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, <laughs> education and get into some other aspects of sports and athletics. When we return to the Rolling Ground Sports and Entertainment Show shortly.